Hello. So let's take a look at one skill summary or freelancer bio that I created. This isn't what I'm using since, you know, I have more experience now. So I'm using a different approach. This is just a sample that I created for people who are just starting or in the earlier stages of their freelancing career since this video is specifically for student freelancers. Number one, the most important thing that you should highlight is how you can help the client. Here, for example, I highlighted this. Do you need help writing engaging and meaningful content? Okay, so it's important that you focus on how you can help the client, what value you can bring to their business, how you can help them achieve their goals. So I always recommend starting with this. Like, it's like a hook. Um, give them a preview or like a one-liner of what exactly you can offer them in the shortest but most meaningful way possible. So here, um, I focused on engaging and meaningful content because there are many, for example, there are many writers online, but many of them are also not skilled, I'd say, in writing articles that appeal to online audiences. So that's a common pain point of clients and I decided to target that specific pain point. So when they read this, they know na, oh, yeah, I, I've encountered writers before who can write sentences but the articles aren't really enjoyable to read. So I, I'm glad that this specific freelancer understands this dilemma of mine. So that's number one. Number two is, of course, always highlight your skills. So that's what I did next. I made this short list of the skills that you can offer your client. So obviously, this is just an example. You should change this depending on what your niche is or what your skills are. But this is somewhat similar to what I used when I was just starting out. I focused on blog article writing, some minor SEO. I'm not really an SEO expert. Even until now, I'm not that skilled in SEO. I just know the basics. I also focused on editing and proofreading. I also added graphic design. But, you know, it's like lower down the list because I'm not really a graphics person. But I can create graphics to accompany the articles that I write. And, of course, there's always general VA tasks if... I think this is helpful if you're a beginner and you don't really have a specific niche yet. I just added this here, but as much as possible, do not define yourself as just a general VA because there are a lot of general VAs these days, so competition is extremely hard. I mean, you can probably get a general VA job, but you know it's gonna be a lot harder compared to getting specific jobs like copywriting, TikTok, marketing, stuff like that. And then next part is, you know, just put a very brief summary of who you are. Don't ramble too much about yourself. Again, you have to focus on what you bring to the client or what value you can offer. Here in this example, this is basically what I wrote about myself. So just customize it depending on your qualifications. And then, if you're a beginner, you haven't, you don't have any professional writing experience, that's fine. When I was starting out, what I did was, I counted the years or like the time that I spent writing for student publications. So I wrote for my elementary school paper, my high school um, school paper. I wrote some for some of my college works as well, but not as much. So yeah, if you really don't have any choice, you can include that. So for example, you can customize this. I have been a writer for two, three years having worked in our school publication as a feature writer or an editorial writer, something like that. And then next is try to write a sentence that you think will make you stand out from other writers. And here I wrote, I understand how challenging it is for clients like you to create content that adds value to your business, so I make sure to tailor fit my approach to your specific needs. So basically, you're just showing that you're not just a good writer, but at the same time, you have the ability to really listen to what the client needs, what the client wants, and customize your output in order to be able to meet the client's expectations. And then, uh, this one, I just added a bit more self-advertisement, I'd say, but again, nothing too long. You can expect timely and high-quality output, and I always welcome constructive feedback from clients. And then here, um, I just added some extra details that might be relevant. I uh, Full-time, part-time, and project-based engagements are welcome, depending, of course, on what you can handle. Obviously, if you can only handle part-time projects, then that's what you should put here. And then lastly, as an ending note, I am looking forward to hearing from you. You can also write something like, send me a message, and let's work together, something like that. So, last thing, and this is super important, in my opinion, if you're a student freelancer, you don't have to say that you are a student. I'm not I'm not saying you lie, but one thing that I see a lot when it comes to student freelancers is from the very beginning of their bio, they immediately say, hello, I'm so-and-so, I'm currently studying blah 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 in college, but I want to earn money while being a student. That's something I see a lot, but you should really avoid that because number one, clients don't really care if you're struggling as a student, if you're struggling with money. As bad as it is to hear, 
being a student while being a freelancer might be a negative thing for clients because they might think, oh, this freelancer is not focused on work because they're studying, so they might pass on you right away. So, yes, um, don't, if they ask you directly, don't lie, but at the same time, you don't have to bring it up right away. You don't have to even put it on your profile unless they ask. And another thing that makes freelancing great is usually foreigners don't really care about your degree as long as you do the job well. Unless it's relevant to the job post that you are applying to. Like for example, you're applying for a job post for a chemistry tutor and you're a chemistry major. So that's gonna be plus points, right? Then go ahead and mention it. But otherwise, you don't really have to put it on your bio. So I guess let's just take a look at some profiles that I think are good. So obviously these people aren't me. Um, these are just freelancers I found browsing online jobs PH. Let's just look at their profiles as an example. For example, this guy. You can see here, his experience summary says he has more than five years of experience in graphic design at the university publication. So this is one thing, one approach that you can use as a student freelancer. There's nothing wrong with highlighting your experience in your school paper. Even though technically it's not a job, it's not a professional experience, but it's experience nonetheless. And if you don't have any other um, thing to show, then might as well include your experience in your school paper, right? Okay, so let's also take a look at one upward freelancer. Again, this isn't my profile, this is a profile for someone offering general virtual assistance. As you can see here, her bio is very straightforward and she did mention she's an assistant but most of it are details about how she can help her client. She says she can lessen the workload by doing all of these tasks and offering these skills. So, <coughs> sorry for my voice. My, my throat is kind of itchy. Again, this is a good example of a simple straightforward but effective bio. Yung ad configuration, bin pa rin siya. 
Okay, so I'll show you how to write proposals that could help you land high-paying jobs. So these are some job posts on Upwork and let's use this one as a sample. So this job post is looking for a content writer for a tech blog. So obviously, number one, the most important thing you need to do is to read the job post thoroughly sometimes or most of the time actually there are some hidden instructions that you have to follow in order to be considered for the job. So in this case, at the end of the article or the job post, they said, please answer what your favorite tech gadget is in order to be considered. So this is another common mistake that I see. Some people just skim through the job post and then send a generic proposal. So they tend to miss hidden instructions like this. And so their applications are automatically declined. So in this case, you're looking for a writer for a tech blog and they're providing tutorials to solve gadget problems. So how I like to start my proposal is, and this is something that I don't really see a lot, I started with a strong statement that highlights how much I understand the client's struggles. I would recommend that you try to think from the perspective of the client. What do you think their main problems are when they're trying to hire freelancers? So in this case, when it comes to tech blogs, usually it's hard to find writers that are knowledgeable in the technology, but at the same time, writers that can write in such a way that even normal everyday people can understand it. Because usually, technically skilled people aren't really good at simple communications. Sometimes they're so, they're so good at what they do that they tend to use complicated terms or, you know, wording that, that's just not friendly to the average internet user. So that's what I chose to highlight. In this sample proposal, I open it right away with a strong statement. What I wrote is, the best tech tutorials are those that strike a perfect balance between authority and readability. You want to demonstrate enough knowledge to make sure that your audience sees you as a trustworthy resource, but it's also crucial to use simple language that's easy to understand even for tech newbies. So, you know, usually proposals start with, hello, my name is something something. I have experience here. I can do this. I studied this. I worked with this client. So that's what they usually receive. But when you start it with something strong, a statement like this that communicates right away that you understand exactly what the client is looking for, then they're more likely to pay attention to your proposal and read your cover letter all the way to the end. Because just from the very first sentence alone, they already know, oh, this freelancer, I think they can help me because they understand what I'm looking for. Okay, so that's the number one tip from me. Actually, it's number two. Number one is be sure to read the job post thoroughly. That's the most important thing. Next, I added, and that's exactly what I can offer. So basically, this is just me bridging the first sentence that I wrote with the rest of the, of the proposal. You should customize this depending on what the client is looking for or what your niche is. But I think this is a blueprint that anyone can follow. And then that's when you start talking about yourself. So notice that this one is all about the client's needs, all about their business, what they need. And you only really talk specifically about yourself midway through. I am name, a content writer with experience in blah, blah, blah. I have worked with blah, blah, blah. So I have experience in WordPress and Canva as well. So don't make this too long. I make sure to mention this because that's actually included in their job post. Experience using WordPress and Canva is a plus. So obviously, if you have that, don't forget to highlight that in your proposal as well. Next would be, you can rest assured that you'll get articles that are 100% original, thoroughly researched, and accurate. So again, this is kind of related to another part that they wrote here on the job post about taking ownership of the articles you write. So that means you have to be responsible about what you're writing, making sure that it's backed up by research, and it's obviously accurate because when you're writing about technical topics, accuracy is extremely important. So you can customize this depending on what you're writing. Like for example, if you're writing an entertainment article, then I think it would be more important to highlight that the article is engaging or entertaining, easy to read. But since we're talking about tech here, this is what I chose to highlight. And then here, the answer to the hidden question, don't forget. And then again, just end it with looking forward to hearing from you or Feel free to reach out if you want to discuss a partnership, something like that. So that's basically it. That's Those are the basics, I feel. Of course, you can customize it depending on what you feel is right. Sometimes there are clients who value super long proposals. There are also clients who prefer your pro proposal to be super straightforward. Like, hey, 
I can do this for you, let's work together, message me, something like that. Sometimes you will be able to tell from the job post if they prefer short proposals, proposals or long proposals, but usually you really can't. So I think this is a general blueprint that you can safely use um, for most applications. So yeah, that's it for writing a good proposal. I'm probably not gonna speak anymore. I need to preserve my voice for my meetings later. <laughs> Bye! Yes knowledge base nila because I'm gonna need it for the videos okay H how do you actually measure yung utilization <laughs> okay mm, okay um that's naman yung gist yeah I see Thank you.